want to talk about one of the highest grossing tours that Jim Crockett Promotions ever mounted and how it started with me having surgery. <laughs> I mean, you know, everybody talks about the 86 Great American Bash because it was the, you know, the first big tour. And everybody talks about 88 because it was the, the first pay-per-view and it was a bigger tour overall with a lot more places. And that's when TBS was heavily involved. So 87 doesn't get a lot of love, right? <clears throat> but it actually, when you go back, it did some good business. So I thought we would go back and look through July of 1987 and figure out exactly what happened. And I have not looked ahead of time through my book here. I haven't read that because I don't sit here normally during the course of a day and, and read my old books. So I haven't looked at any of this for a while. So we will see what we, what we were, what I recall and what you can prompt Brian with your encyclopedic knowledge of everything that ever happened. Big red Reese. <laughs> he was not on the 87 great American bash tour. That's right. All right. Let's see here. Okay. It was June 27th, by the way, for those keeping track. We go to Philadelphia, we're at Civic Center, and that's a Saturday night, and it's a two out of three fall match with Rock and Roll Express for the tag team title. that they, they possessed that then for the NWA world tag title. So we do, we split the falls, and then in the third fall, I just, I roll in and do a, a quick gut shot with the racket on Ricky for a disqualification and they throw Robert over the top rope and we start getting some heat on Ricky and we drop his throat on the racket and steal the belts and we're going to leave, right? And when the troops come, they send some other, Robert rolls in with a chair and some other people run in. And the last, very last kick I throw on Ricky when I see the, the baby face is coming, right? I give a big one, boom, and kick him with my right foot, but my left leg was straight, and and I felt – I never found it because I immediately had to roll out and get out of there, but I felt that the padding had kind of separated in in the – underneath the canvas, and when my uh, foot hit, it kind of went in sideways. So, But I knew the feeling because I'd done it at Stargate. I've just torn my ACL. Boom, knee goes out. And so I get back to the locker room and I'm like, oh, fuck again. And what timing? Because the bash tour starts in like three days. <clears throat> so I don't know what the house was that night uh, in Philly because uh, the tearing the ACL kind of took the business out of me, but we got paid 700 bucks. So there were probably in the neighborhood of, of 8,000 people there, I, I would think. But then the next day we fly back home to Charlotte, but I, we actually, this is how they scheduled things in those days, folks. We were in Greenville, North Carolina, which is all the way out toward the Eastern part of the state on Friday night, 280 miles. We drove back to Charlotte that night. Then we took Crockett's plane. As a matter of fact, yes, it, we took, uh, no, uh, some people took Crockett's plane, but I flew commercial. Uh, to Philadelphia the next day, Saturday, did a show. Sunday morning, I flew commercial back to Charlotte and was scheduled to be at a TV taping in Rock Hill, South Carolina at 1 o'clock. But since I had torn the fucking ligament, it was huge, and I was in the process of getting it drained and et cetera. I didn't make the TV taping, but then after they did two hours of TV in Rock Hill from 2 to 4, they took Crockett's plane and went to Wilmington. North Carolina back literally we've been to Philadelphia, right? They went back literally within a fucking hour's drive of Greenville, North Carolina for Sunday and did another uh, $29,000 there with the main event of the rock and roll express and the midnight express. So that's how they used to schedule things. We did four shows in what, what is that? 72 fucking hours. And, uh, and a TV taping was amongst them. Anyway, I missed Greenville on Monday because that's when I had the knee scoped. They, they didn't repair the ligament. This is the one I finally had fixed in 2006 and have regretted that. But they had to go in and clean out the damage because I had cartilage was torn. It was floating around and the ends of the ligament and everything. So they scope it. And the theory is hopefully I can get back in, a, they say two weeks. And I'm like, I got to get back quicker than that. So I'm, uh, but Greenville, South Carolina it was June 29th. 
and Columbia, South Carolina was June 30th. And they did about 15 grand in, in Greenville, 13 grand in Columbia. This was nothing because the bash tour was scheduled to start on the first, right? Lakeland, Florida, July 1st, the Civic Center, a $40,000 house. So back in those, let's say 30 something hundred people. Uh, the Midnight Wrestle to Rock and Roll Express, I was not there. <laughs> but here's the thing. We had made it known to Jim Crockett when I had to have surgery that the last time, such as six months ago, I tore my other knee and I was off two weeks. You didn't pay me shit. And it'd be nice if I got something because I was injured in the line of duty, right? So it, it, I basically, I was getting payoffs on the good houses, uh, but not on the shitty houses. So for the expense they went to put on the great American bash in Lakeland, Florida and draw 40 grand. Apparently they didn't make any money. Cause I didn't get paid. <laughs> wow. But the following day in Landover, Maryland at the Capitol center with the rock and roll express and the midnight express next to uh, second from the top on the card for the world tag team title. And they did a $195,000 house, which was a record for the NWA in, in Landover. And I got a grand out of it. I think the boys probably got two or like twice what, cause I was getting half pay since I wasn't there, but at least I got something right. Because I'm, I'm still recovering. Richmond, Virginia, Friday, July 3rd. The rock and roll express two out of three falls for the world tag title. And Bubba is at ringside, by the way for these matches. Um, so at least they had some backup there, but Richmond did 125 grand and I got 500 bucks. So it's like, you know, half again, what I would have got, but this one is the one that hurt because they shot this for TV. And this is the one where you see Bubba roll in and give Ricky Morton, the Bubba slam and his hat falls off. And, and when he rolls out and, and, and one of the midnight's tops, Ricky and, Tommy Young rolls over to count and counts one and two, and then comes up with the hat. That was this one in Atlanta. They did TV at the Omni. The house was $245,000. Wow. So like 16,000 people. I, I got a grand, but I still, I couldn't be there. Right. So that one hurt. And then the next day in Charleston, West Virginia at the Civic Center, July 5th, $95,000 house against the Road Warriors for the U.S. tag title where we were defending. And I got three fifty, but I was not there. And then the, the two I enjoyed not being at, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, July 6th and July 7th, the Forum in Los Angeles on Ju Monday, July 6th, and the San Francisco Civic Arena on July 7th. And actually, I would have liked to have been in San Francisco. The forum did $85,000. I don't know if that's enough to pay the light bill in that fucking place. We should not have been running Los Angeles, and especially take the guys from Charleston, West Virginia on Sunday night to Los Angeles on Monday night. Uh, $85,000 would have been great if it was Greenville, South Carolina, but not Los Angeles at the forum. In San Francisco, that old Civic Arena, uh, they did sixty-six grand, and that was a better atmosphere and certainly a cheaper building. But for fuck's sake, once again, to go all the way to the West Coast, and we had a match with the Road Warriors. So I, just the trip alone, and with that, my knee still swelled up from the surgery, uh, and and trying to sit on the planes or navigate the cabs or whatever, that would have been insane. <clears throat> so... We uh, and then they did Atlanta TV on July the eighth, which I believe, which I was at. So I returned on July eighth at Atlanta TV. So basically, I I heard it on the 29th. <laughs> no, on the twenty seventh. I went home on the twenty eighth. I had surgery on the twenty ninth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, ten days later, I come back to TV. You bastards! You can't stop. <laughs> Of course, when I wasn't on camera, I was I, actually, I was using a crutch to get around anyway. I used it uh, that weekend, but more on that later. But anyway, so Atlanta TV, 10 days later, we do the two tapes. Uh, then July 9th was Cincinnati, uh, the gardens this time, not the riverfront uh, stadium like they had done the previous year. And it was the Rock and Roll Express for the world tag title. 
and this house did 63 grand which was not uh it, by any means record business territory in cincinnati but it, it was wasn't that bad and I, I got 470 bucks for actually being there on crutches <laughs> whereas i i made a thousand dollars for not even being there at the omni but the house was four times as much anyway um so i got my feet back wet at the uh gardens and i had bubba to help me around on uh at ringside because i'm basically the knee is not bending that well yet, so I've got one crutch that I'm getting around on, I think, as I recall. Just one. So I, so I could have the racket in the other hand. Um, then we go Friday, July 10th to Pittsburgh, the Civic Arena. And Brian Hildebrand and his father, Regis, were there. Uh, and this was a, uh, a semifinal U.S. title match, it says. I have no idea. <laughs> I think we were the champions, but against Garvin and Wyndham. And Pittsburgh at the Civic Arena did one hundred and forty-two thousand dollars, which is, yeah. I would say, topping twelve thousand. Even at bash ticket prices, probably topping twelve thousand people. Our payoff was a thousand thirty-five dollars. I forgot to do the inflation calculator, but on exact amounts. But we established at the mid eighties, a hundred dollars then is about what two thirty-five today, so almost two and a half times. So say that that Pittsburgh house would have been, by that logic, what to uh, over four hundred thousand dollars or close to four hundred thousand dollars, and our payoffs would have been twenty five hundred bucks piece. Uh, Saturday, July eleventh, we go from Pittsburgh, and I this fucking routing. This is what killed Jim Crockett Promotions was the routing. Friday night is Pittsburgh. Saturday is Oklahoma City at the Myriad. <laughs> We wrestled the Road Warriors, and they beat us wholeheartedly. And the house was $54,000 because old Mid-South Territory was not what it once was. But that was still a $500 shot. But then guess where we were on Sunday? We've been in Pittsburgh on Friday, July 10th, right? Now we're in Oklahoma City on July the 11th. Where were we on Sunday, July 12th? Pittsburgh, Oklahoma City, from Oklahoma City, you're either in Minnesota or Florida. You are incorrect. Baltimore, Maryland, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> About a three and a half hour drive from Pittsburgh, I think it's about four hours, maybe, whatever. <clears throat> Back in Baltimore at the arena, but the house was $146,000. So once again, that was a, a, close to a sellout in, in Baltimore. And uh, we had one of our only... Uh, Midnight Express versus original Freebirds matches ever with Michael and Buddy. And uh, we won, by the way, uh, with uh, over Buddy Roberts with the racket. But that's like one of only two or three matches we ever had with the uh, two of the original Freebirds. Just a two on two match is what I'm saying. Yeah. Wow. And uh, and also uh, uh, somehow Miss Atlanta Live. Oh, that's what it was. Underneath, on the underneath card, I was supposed to face Miss Atlanta Lively, but since I was on crutches, Bobby filled in, and he just, Garvin just knocked me down at the beginning, and I just rolled out because I couldn't get up yet, and then he beat up Bobby and pinned him, but he was as Miss Atlanta Lively. That was her last appearance, I believe, on record. And now, now that we have gone, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you keeping tra tabs, even though I wasn't there because of injury, we, we've gone from Lakeland, Florida, to Landover, Maryland, to Richmond, Virginia, Atlanta, Georgia, Charleston, West Virginia, Los Angeles, California, San Francisco, California, Atlanta, Georgia, Cincinnati, Ohio, Pittsburgh, Oklahoma City, Baltimore on successive days. Where do you think we were on Monday, July 13th? Uh, I don't want to have to guess again. Uh, Florida will be my guess again. You are correct. Hey. West Palm Beach, Florida. <laughs> The Rock and Roll Express for the World Tag Team Championship in front of a $55,000 house, which apparently was a record at that time in West Palm Beach. Really? Wow. And we got $500. Bucks. Um, then the next day, since, of course, you're in that historic Florida territory, why not go to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, <laughs> 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 where we wrestled. Uh, Robert and Brad Armstrong, because Ricky had actually gotten hurt, uh, somehow the previous night. And I can't remember how, 
I believe it was. But anyway, Baton Rouge at the Centriplex, $23,000 house. So the Mid-South Bloom was off the rose there. Uh, the July 15th, then we go from one end of the Mid-South Territory to the other, Little Rock, Arkansas, Barton Coliseum. Uh, this time it's uh, Robert Gibson and Barry Wyndham against the Midnight Express and a dismal non-recorded house. Mid-South was having his troubles. But Thursday, July 16th, the Great American Bash on tour in Freedom Hall in Johnson City, Tennessee. And in five years, the home of Smoky Mountain Wrestling in Johnson City. A $72,000 house to see the Bash on tour. And we defeated the, uh, no, we lost to the Garvins, Roddy and Jimmy, by disqualification for the U.S. Tag Team Championship. Then... Friday, July 17th, Norfolk, Virginia, The Scope, a $180,000 house. The biggest house so far of the whole bash tour was in Norfolk, Virginia, the Crockett Territory. So naturally, they kept trying to leave the Crockett Territory. <laughs> um, and uh, once again, we got $1,000 that night. So that house would have been four hundred grand today. We'd have got $2,500. Uh, and we weren't even the main event. By far on that one, I believe. And then Saturday, July 18th, Charlotte Memorial Stadium, another of the times that we actually faced the Freebirds, and we beat Buddy again. Um, but we got a great record against the original Freebirds. <laughs> but that was just on the card for the, our U.S. tag team title. Uh, that was, my God, I can't remember, but I think it was, was it a, it wasn't a War Games main event, but it was a big, flare main event etc cetera, etc cetera, but at memorial stadium in charlotte and that house was down from 1985 and 86 and still did 174 thousand dollars and with the cheap tickets at the stadium you know you're talking 15 thousand people and that was down because it had been like 23 thousand a year before or whatever but still as that's for a town you run every month and we made $1,355. Crockett was like he sliced it all the way down to the nub for us, gave us every penny he could. Then uh, the next day, it, it, the only way we could do this was with Crockett's plane, right? We're in Charlotte, so at least we, we're home where we live that night. But Sunday morning, we get up. We go to the airport, um, <clears throat> the Butler Aviation section of Charlotte, where they had the private flights come in and out. And get there at like uh, 1130 or whatever and get on Crockett's plane and we fly, you know, an hour and a half up to Roanoke, Virginia and get there for a two o'clock show. It's the bash on tour. It's a record $80,000 house at the Roanoke Civic Center. We made $800 a piece against the Rock and Roll Express. Um, but then it, we had to immediately rush back to the airport and fly to Chicago. And this is how tight they time this shit. We're just going from Eastern to Central time. We've got a show in Roanoke from 2 to 4.30. You've got to get back to the airport, jump on that plane. Boom, there's a couple of preliminaries maybe in Chicago to in case of delay. But you're li sometimes you're not changing clothes, right? And go to Chicago, the USC Pavilion. There's the Great American Bash on tour. A sold-out $136,000 house. And our payoff that night, because we were with the Rock and Roll Express in one of the feature matches, was $1,935 a piece. So uh, Crockett's, people say Crockett didn't do good business in 87, but there was four shows in three days that grossed uh, almost $600,000. And we personally made thirty-seven, for, made over $5,000 a piece just in, in those three days. But the the fact that they scheduled that shit like that, if anything went wrong, thunderstorms, power outages, fucking there, there used to be mishaps just like there are today, Brian. It's it just we have more ways to find out about them now. But shit used to traffic jams. But this shit was timed right down to the fucking nub. And then Sunday at Sunday night after Chicago, um, I believe that I flew back commercial uh, because there may not have been room on the plane, but we just had to be in Greenville, South Carolina. That was two hours from Charlotte. So you fly back from Chicago, go to your house, change your shit in your bag, and then go to fucking uh, Greenville, which did $70,000.
uh, the house. We made 655 bucks that night, two hours from Charlotte against the rock and roll express. And then finally had a day off. July 21st is the first day off that we had had since, well, for the guys on the tour, that had been the first day off of the month and mine was for my surgery. What, do you, do you notice guys whining about the fact that they're always on the fucking road these days because they work uh, Thursday through fucking Sunday or whatever? I was just thinking that because it's not just what you guys are doing with Crockett, but even like the WWF schedule back then, it was nuts. There were guys who did like afternoon shows on the East Coast and had to fly out to Los Angeles the same day to work the same day. Both companies, oh, yeah. Both companies well, and, it, and it was schedules. worse with them. It was worse with the WWF because they had longer tours. They didn't have their own plane where you couldn't come back some nights to, you know, your home base. So it, it was worse there. And well, and, and once again, the, we get one day off the 21st, right? July 22nd, we do uh, an Atlanta TV taping in Columbus, Georgia. And that did 16 grand for the TV taping. But then the July 23rd, the very next day, we're back to Dallas, Texas at Reunion Arena. And this is for the UWF tag team title with Brad Armstrong and Tim Horner. And that the whole show at Reunion Arena, because once again, Fritz's territory was on its ass also, $72,000. And that's a major city arena. Our payoff was 250 bucks because they, they probably had to pay to get out of there. And then we went to Houston, Texas the next night. Listen to this match. They were trying to revive the UWF at that point or do whatever they were trying to do with it. But in Houston, Texas, the Midnight Express, Bobby Eaton and Stan Lane, Big Bubba Rogers, and Black Bart, who was at least, you know, had had a history in that town, yeah. against the Freebirds, Michael Hayes and Buddy Roberts, and the Rock and Roll Express. Wow. And me and Skandor Akbar in a small cage at ringside. That was one of the many matches on along with Ric Flair and whoever the fuck was there, and blah, blah, blah. 34 grand at the summit in Houston. What was it like being a cellmate with uh, Skandar Akbar? Uh, yeah, no, it was quite pleasant. I liked Ak. He was a very, very witty man. Um, but it was, they were shooting deer in the balcony. It was just empty. That In 1987, Texas was not the place to go to draw over the whole Mid-South Territory at that point. So we got 250 bucks a piece. And then from Houston to Philadelphia, July 25th against the Rock and Roll, it's a lumberjack match with tennis rackets where we were defeated in front of a $150,000 house. The payoff was 1145 bucks a piece, but once again, that was pretty close to a sellout in the Civic Center, even at the bash prices. Um, I, re- I think the scaffold match with the Midnight and the Road Warriors had set the Civic Center record previously at like hundred and sixty-five grand or something like that. Uh, then uh, the, the next day, we went to... Cleveland, Ohio, and they did this once a year for a couple of years, but it wasn't a bash. It was a short show uh, at Municipal Stadium after the Cleveland Indians baseball game, and that's where some of the pictures that you have seen of me and Bob Eaton and Stan Lane and the Rock and Roll Express in a baseball stadium with like, I mean, like, you know, a lot of people there, but also you can see there's a lot of people ain't there. What is it? Fucking 80,000 seat stadium. Um. But that's where that came from because we did it after the ball game. And that's when they told me to go out and kill time while they were setting the ring up. And I got to people so right. I said the last people the Indians beat was Custer. And, you know, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, is, 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 you know, who who you who can you boast of being from Cleveland and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Eric Carmen, you bunch of wimps, right? And they started throwing so much shit at me. Security had to take me off the fucking field. Anyway. Eric Carmen. <laughs> um, yeah, well, <laughs> So it was a $50,000 sold show deal. So we each got a, a grand for going there and, and playing around in the stadium that afternoon. Hey, Jim, that reminds me, this Bash Tour in 87, I don't recall uh, if this wa- if they were still doing musical guests at certain shows, were they? No. <laughs> well, and, and I don't – there may have been one or two. There may have been something in Charlotte that year. I mean, the, the ones that – it would have been a few of them, and they would have been targeted. They didn't have Delbert McClinton in fucking Philadelphia again. <laughs> it just – I mean, it was, a, it was a good idea. It really was, and I copied it to some extent in Smoky Mountain Wrestling, except I didn't use any name bands that I had to pay any money to. But the concept of – 
music and wrestling and, you know, outdoors and, and fireworks and stuff. That was great. Dusty just over overreached and was hiring Waylon Jennings. And it just, it, it wasn't necessary. They didn't add in their own world. No, none of those country music fans were coming to see those people unless they wanted to see the wrestling, but a lot of wrestling fans were coming. They didn't care whether the country music folks were on it or not. That therefore they were not selling the tickets, but they were getting an inordinate part of the money. I think after the first year, they <clears throat> came to that conclusion. <laughs> Anyone they had to pull the plug on who the fuck did was it George Jones in Jacksonville or was it who was it that we I can never remember I can't tell they all look alike to me we, we like, found I, out we got the answer and I forgot what we determined I forgot it was. what we found out yeah but anyway um, Monday July twenty seventh that's where we left off we go once again from Cleveland Ohio to Fayetteville North Carolina against uh, Barry and Kendall Wyndham who we defeated, thank goodness, but $88,000 in Fayetteville, North Carolina at the Cumberland County Memorial Arena that they Crockett had been running once every two weeks, if not once a month, since the dawn of time, did an $88,000 house, and we made $600, whereas we had just gone to Houston, Texas, did a house less than half of that, and we made less than half that. And it, 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 Fayetteville, North Carolina, outdrew Dallas, Texas. Fayetteville, North Carolina outdrew, as you'll recall, uh, Los Angeles and goddamn San Francisco. That's what when Flair talks about and some guys talk about if Crockett had just never gone west of the Mississippi, that's a simplification of it. But there were a lot of places that we were going that we should that it, it would have been better to go to Gaffney, South Carolina and gross 30 grand at, at the ball field then go to Los Angeles and gross 80 grand at the forum. I think everybody can understand that, right? Yeah. Because of the fact that you will have money left over in Gaffney, <laughs> but not in Los Angeles when you're at a fucking NBA arena. Anyway, I digress. So then we almost had a day off July 28th because we're in Rock Hill, South Carolina, which is 20 miles from Charlotte. And it's a regular house show. I guess Ronnie and Jimmy Garvin, just a nice 30 minute Broadway, but it's, it was only half an hour, you know, in the car to get there. So that's like a day. And we made 120 bucks because it was a non bash show at the end of the month in Rock Hill. After we'd just drawn 18,000 people in Charlotte, uh, 20 miles up the road two weeks before. So we went down there and went a half an hour for $120. We weren't even getting paid as much per hour as a fucking plumber at that rate. I don't think. Um, then July 29th was at, at Atlanta TV taping, uh, at, uh, at the Atlanta studios. We did two of those. And then the 30th was back in Jacksonville, Florida, but this time at the Coliseum, not the Gator bowl against the rock and roll express and Jacksonville, Florida did $92,000 and we made 600 bucks. Um, and then the, uh, uh July 31st was the orange bowl in Miami where we made $800, they still should have gone indoors in Miami. But the fact is it, there was a lot of people there if it had been an indoor building. So you're seeing that, that basically the Carolinas and Virginias and Floridas and Georgias, that portion of the business was strong. It was, and, and the, the Northeast that we had a, a foothold in, it was the Western expansion anyway. But then speaking of the Western expansion, and by the way, July 31st, the Orange Bowl in Miami is where Bubba was the war machine to tra- take the place in the second war games. Takes yeah. place at J.J. Dillon because Hawk <laughs> broke fucking J.J.'s shoulder with that doomsday device in the first war games. Anyway, uh, the Orange Bowl in Florida, July 31st, August 1st, was New Orleans, Louisiana in the Superdome. And we faced once again, Brad Armstrong and Tim Horner for the, uh, UWF tag team championship. And I believe it says it was a reverse decision where at first we won, but then we didn't guess what the house was in the Superdome in new Orleans, Brian last. Oh my God. Summer of 87. Yeah. There's no way. I hate to say there would be maybe 3000 people there, but, uh, I don't know what the gate would be. Well, that should uh, be low. Forty-two thousand dollars. So I think you're probably right about the three thousand sum, if if that. Yeah. How much do you think the expenses were to turn on the lights in the Superdome? More than that. 
Um, well, I, I know that when they drew, we drew a hundred and seventy three thousand dollars in April, the last stampede, April of nineteen eighty four. Jack Curtis showed me the check made out to Mid South Sports after rent, building expenses, ticketing, everything they had to pay the Superdome. They left with one hundred and twenty six. So that was. Hmm. Forty-six or forty-seven thousand dollars that they paid in some respect, <clears throat> but anyway, we got four hundred bucks and we're and we're happy to get the fuck out of there. But listen, once again, here's these last few days: July thirtieth, Jacksonville, Florida; July thirty-first, Miami, Florida; August first, New Orleans, Louisiana; August second, Sunday afternoon, two o'clock in Huntington, West Virginia. Against the rock and roll, we did thirty-four thousand dollars. So we did in Huntington, West Virginia, two o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. We did thirty-four grand as opposed to forty-two in the Superdome in New Orleans, and our payoff was fifty dollars more in Huntington. And then that night we went to Charlotte, our home, and I don't have the house recorded, but it was rock and roll bunkhouse match, and the payoff was five seventy-five. So I'm figuring that was a mid-level house of about forty-something grand in Charlotte. But once again, they go to the Orange Bowl and the, and the Superdome in uh, two days in a row and gross more money in Charlotte and Huntington, West Virginia the next two days, or in the same day. And then finally, we had a day off on Monday, August 3rd, and that whole fucking tour through hysteria had come to an end. And as I see, uh, and I just, on August 6th, I got my $400 knee brace that had to be custom made so that I could walk, because... That was the fucking big issue was that when I went back on the road, because I didn't want to miss any more of those big shows and that Baltimore show, and they were, they were going to be not only big payoffs, but I hated to miss the fucking things, but the leg was still, you know, 10 days from having it scoped. So it was still and, and tearing it violently. So it was still swollen up. And when I'd either sit on the plane it would swell because I wasn't putting any weight on it. Or when I would put too much weight on it, like walking through a giant long airport concourse, it was, it was a fucking rib. Right. And you, you know, you could dick around and try to get one of those carts and the boys would make fun of you. And also you probably miss the shit because if, you know, if you were flying commercial, it was split second timing. It was a little better on the, on Crockett's plane. But, uh, but that didn't, I didn't have time to do physical therapy because I'm fucking doing that goddamn schedule. When exactly was I going to go and devote a couple hours to actually doing the shit I was supposed to be doing? So I think that's one of the reasons why it was never one of my favorite knees after that. But it was a, but, and that, even though I was getting paid, you know, half price sometimes, um, which in those days was unusual. If it had been any, any other territory, it probably would not would have happened. But we kind of shamed uh, Crockett on that one, and they were doing such business. But, you know, in in those days, you just wanted to get back. You did not want to to miss – you know, it, it diminished everything if I was not there with the Midnight Express, you know, when, what we were presenting on TV. And if the stipulations revolved around me, uh, you know, so we felt bad about that shit in those days. And now it's just like card subject to change, and nobody takes it seriously when something's advertised. Everything you just said really makes you think about the whole idea of a survival plan for Crockett Promotions. If they had run the entire uh, East Coast, because by that point, Florida was done and they had taken over that and they had run as far north as, I think, Boston and not gone too far west and stayed stay the fuck out of the Mid-South Territory. They, they, should have, they should have stayed out of everything north of Philadelphia, too. Uh, Boston wasn't worth it for the fucking... It, the, the law of diminishing returns up there too. That was it, concede that to Vince, and and build your it, the the economy would have revived because wrestling was popular in Texas and Louisiana. The the idea of wrestling, the concept of wrestling, was popular. It was just that the economy was depressed and the original two ter one territory had gone out of business and been bought by Crockett and the other territory. The Von Erich scandals had, you know, just left a bad taste, but eventually interest would come back there. If they'd have joined that with everything, you know, fucking that they had on the eastern seaboard, uh, they could have cooperated with Jerry Jarrett if they wanted to in Memphis or just stayed the fuck away from that because they weren't going to do any big business without Jarrett and Lawler. But they had a lot of room. And Chicago 
was still doing it wasn't even until Starcade that they managed to fuck up Chicago that year when they 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 left uh, 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 Greensboro where they could do three times as much of a gross or twice as much of a gross and tons more people to go to Chicago and then gave them a bad finish and killed Chicago after seven straight sellouts so it was not a great year with some of the decisions but they had a still solid business in the territories they should have been running in if they had just stuck to Chicago, Philadelphia, Baltimore, Greensboro, Charlotte, Atlanta, and I guess you could throw Miami in there. Well, really, the whole the whole Florida territory because Florida was still it was still Eddie Graham style wrestling at that time, and that would was fit more closely by the NWA and and Crockett and etc. Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, Virginia, West Virginia. It, 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 as soon as the economy came back around in in places like Alabama and, and Mississippi and Louisiana and Texas, also Chicago and, and a few places in the Midwest, Baltimore, Philly, D.C., as with the Capital Center, with that Vince had run for years almost exclusively, did almost $200,000. So there, there was, it, 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 in that entire area, Ohio uh, was, uh, Michigan even could have been competition. And, and, you know, but they just, Crockett just started going everywhere. And as you can see, not only going everywhere, but how much money did it cost to transport people back yeah. and forth across the fucking country, whether private planes or commercial, like goddamn, you know, uh, drunken wombats. It was fucking ludicrous. Yeah, and it stands out when you talk about the house shows and what those gates were. It's like, wow, if you would really just run those major cities, mostly on the East Coast, and then hit those house show towns and just kept the booking up, which, you know, Dusty and his booking at that point in time is a whole nother discussion, but... It seems like that would have been a plan for survival. Stay away from the UWF purchase. And Dallas, look, you know, you got to remember, too, Dallas, beyond the tragedies, Ken Mantell goes to the UWF, takes all the top Dallas talent, not named Von Erich, and then they start running in Dallas. And as good as the matches are, the most depressing show ever is Power Pro Wrestling from 86 because it's like an empty Fort Worth. There's no yeah. one there. Oh, oh God. I, I, Fort Worth was a depressing atmosphere to do work and do TV in when somebody was there. It just, it, unless the whole place was sold out, I saw that once or twice with Flair and Carey on top. Otherwise, it was just dreary on a Monday night to begin with. But yeah, and and once again, that's that's the issue is that Crockett just didn't have the structure, the infrastructure in place in the office and everything to expand and chase Vince. He was being told by all these people that he had to run big markets and establish the brand in big markets and the TV revenue would be would the saving grace of everything. So they didn't actually really have a survival plan then because they didn't know they were getting in trouble then. As you'll recall, they didn't know they were in trouble until spring of 88, even though what they did in 87 is what got them in trouble. Yeah. So, the, but the business, you know, it's, I always try to point out that the business, even when people said, oh, in 87, things took a dip. Well, September, we went back to Norfolk and did 55 grand. Detroit in September did 111. That was for that uh, Ronnie Garvin and fucking uh, Flair title change. Uh, there was still good business in different places. It's just the schedule got toward the end of the year, got so diluted and had so many TV tapings uh, because they'd absorbed so many territories and the, they were running more TV tapings than they were major arenas where, so they were losing that revenue from six months before to fill up all that goddamn television time. Yeah. Because at that time you had Beyond the TBS show, you still had the Crockett syndicated shows. You had Florida TV they had taken over. You had yep. everything that was a part of the UWF syndicated package, Power Pro Wrestling, Mid-South Wrestling. You had Kansas City. Kansas right? City. There yeah. was a TV in Kansas City for a while. Yes. It was it, it was ridiculous. And trying to put um, the uh, uh, history of the programs together, or I don't mean the television programs. I mean the, the, t the angles between people. The rivalries and the programs and the things, it, it was all over the page because they were just sending different talent to these different TVs. And it just, you know, it, it, it was uh, – you were doing TV more often than you were doing uh, house shows toward the end of the year, and it just got stupid. But once again, in, in Baltimore in October, still was $93,000 house. And then the other issue is they, in one form or another, began neglecting some of those big cities. When you did, when you took Starcade out of Greensboro, you offended 
those hardcore Greensboro fans. When yeah. You, when you brought it to Chicago and then had the Road Warriors not win the tag titles, you alienated yeah. those fans. <laughs> it was, you know, th- that was the problem. You didn't take care of those big markets that really could support you. And, uh, well, just for example, uh, on October 13th, we did uh, two hours of syndicated TV, Crockett syndicated TV in Shelby, North Carolina. Then on Wednesday, we did two Atlanta TV shows. And on Thursday, we did two more Atlanta TV shows as we were on tour the next week. Jeez. Um, uh, got a day off on Friday the 16th. And then Baltimore did 93 grand on October 17th. And we came back to Roanoke, Virginia that afternoon of Sunday. And then Atlanta at the Omni that Sunday night, which was horrible. <laughs> That's when Atlanta business kind of sucked. And then started doing TV again. Uh, we did TV on, on Tuesday again that week and then went to Florida to fulfill some of those commitments. The following weekend, we were <laughs> Charlotte, North Carolina on Friday night, uh, Philadelphia, uh, Pennsylvania on Saturday, and then Greensboro, 60 miles up the road from Charlotte <laughs> on yeah. Sunday night. And none of them really did very good by that point. <clears throat> so Just, I mean, you're throwing away money with that travel schedule. Even if you want to hit those towns that ended up not being that successful, hit them all in one butt. Why are you bouncing from one place back to the other? I mean, it just makes no sense. I th- They just, you know, I know it's hard to schedule things, but, you know, that that was that was what was going on, basically. So... Anyway, um, you know what? We've had so much fun. The next time we're going to have to do the bunkhouse stampede. That was a whole (laughs) other kettle of fucking fish.